William Elliot is queer. Oh, no. Esquire! In 2005, Elton John teamed up with screenwriter Lee Hall to create a stage version of the 2000 film Billy Elliot about a British motherless boy who trades boxing gloves for ballet shoes. Ever since I first watched the stage production on Broadway in 2007, I became enamored by the piece, its music, its staging, and most surprisingly, it's theology. The classical definition of theology from Anselm of Canterbury is faith seeking understanding. In other words, theology is when a person tries to make sense of what they believe. There are two contrasting approaches when doing this, theology from above and theology from below. Theology from above is likely the means you're more familiar with, particularly if you are a Catholic. This approach says that God reveals everything God wants us to know about God's self, a voice outside of ourselves telling us things we wouldn't normally know otherwise. Theology from below is when a person explores their spiritual intuitions and feelings about God, life questions, or inexplainable events, and uses those ideas to construct a theology. In other words, people making sense of stuff in light of their beliefs. It's this approach that queer theologians gravitate towards when doing queer theology. It recognizes that throughout time, people have tried to explain and provide meaning to things that have happened to them. In this regard, every one of us is a theologian. If you ever try to apply meaning to something you can't explain, you're doing theology. Influenced by queer theory, Father Patrick S. Chang says that there are four themes to consider when doing queer theology. First, questioning and challenging identities, not reaffirming them. Second, being at odds with the normal, the legitimate, the dominant. In this case, one should treat queer as a verb instead of a noun. To queer something, like say the Bible or tradition, is to subvert, deconstruct, rather than merely reaffirm. Third, challenging binaries in which there are only two options. This could include male and female, homosexual and heterosexual, black and white, young and old, day and night, good and bad, etc. And fourth, recognizing sexuality and gender categories as social constructs that are ever-changing. Now, before we look at how these themes are evident in Billy Elliot, I'd like to mention that these four have always existed in Christian tradition, even before there was a discipline known as queer theology. In regards to number one, knowing God transcends all speech and all thought. Thomas Aquinas says that God can only be known by what God is not. Number two, Christianity is a highly transgressive belief system. The incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, and the breaking in of God's reign are transgressive events with respect to the powers and principalities of the world. As Paul writes, God chose what is foolish, weak, low, and despised to shame those who are wise, strong, and powerful. Some examples for number three include the belief that Jesus is both fully human and fully divine, refusing to choose one nature over the other. The Trinity is three co-equal persons. And doctrines such as purgatory create a middle or third space in eschatology. Cheng explains that God's love is so extreme that it dissolves existing boundaries. And to that extent, for the last one, categories don't exist in God's eyes. Jesus rejected social divisions. St. Paul even said once a person is baptized into the body of Christ, they are no longer Gentile or Jew, not even a man nor woman. Now that we have at least a general understanding of what queer theology looks like, we can now apply it to the stage production of Billy Elliot. The performance begins in 1984 with a newsreel revealing tensions between the British Coal Industry Union and the government under Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. The focus then shifts to the men of County Durham in Northeast England who are just on the verge of striking. The action narrows even further by focusing on young Billy Elliot alone. With the stage sequence of events, we recognize the place of one boy within his larger socio-political climate, a boy in a world much larger than his own. When the sun has worn beneath the sun. Whereas the townspeople sing that they stand together, Billy is depicted as sitting, singing, Take me up and hold me gently. Raise me up and hold me high. When Billy first appears on stage at the six minute mark, he sings Raise Me Up, a familiar religious statement to any Christian watching. His words, sounding a lot like a prayer, call to mind an individual yearning to be free from his lot, from his conditions. It's a liberation statement, which is fitting since queer theology is a form of liberation theology. The lyrics continue. Through the night. 
Under darkness will come a day when we will fly. Originally finding its origin in Latin American liberation in the 1960s, liberation theology has been developed throughout the decades by many rejected and outcast groups, including African Americans, African American women, women in general, gays and lesbians, and eventually the LGBTQ community. This song could easily be understood as an anthem of liberation theology. Christ was rejected himself by his own town, and particularly his religious leaders who spewed traditional norms and teachings. Christ entered into solidarity with the poor and the outcasts and taught a message of acceptance, inclusion, empathy, just to name a few. This is the main reason why the example and teachings set forth by Jesus are so vital to the work of liberation theologians. The first time the audience is privy to Billy's dancing is when he's alone. This is appropriate, since solitude is a spiritual discipline, and it's often in silence that we can truly hear the Spirit's calling. Like when Jesus withdrew to the desert to be in solitude before beginning his destiny, here Billy does likewise. The name Billy is derived from English-Germanic origin, meaning will, or desire, or determination. Ignatian spirituality teaches that the deepest desires of the heart are signs of the Holy Spirit. Desires are linked to your charisms, in other words, sacred gifts, which are linked to your vocation, in other words, calling. This musical is a story about an individual's desire and calling for liberation, which, if you know your Judeo-Christian theology, was the intended role of the Messiah. It's interesting that the miners sing that they stand as one beneath the sun. In this spelling, sun refers to what's in the sky, S-U-N. But by the end of the show, we ought to consider that the word sun could actually be a play on words referencing Jackie Elliott's son, S-O-N, Billy, as a messianic figure who models liberation from social oppression. In this sense, Billy, the sun, is a Christ figure. After the ensemble opening number, the family story begins with Jackie and Billy's brother Tony preparing food in the kitchen. Note the costuming here. Jackie wears an apron portraying a woman's body in a bikini, while Tony wears nothing but his briefs. From the get-go, we see a distinction between male and female bodies. But the fact that Jackie, the brawny coal mining patriarch, comically wears a woman's body at the start of the show indirectly tells the audience that traditional gender roles might be challenged tonight. You're wearing a bloody bikini! Now, typically, you don't see men of Jackie's physical stature wearing something so feminine. This could be an example of gender bending, which is when one resists the traditional binary way of looking at a man or a woman. During biblical times, gender bending would have been seen as sinful. As I've said on a previous episode, the sin of Leviticus isn't being gay or even gay sex. It's the fact that when a man places himself in a position of a woman, he is giving up his privileged maleness and what it means to be man. In a culture that valued patriarchy, fertility, and hell, the penis itself, this would have been extremely bothersome. Now, in no way do I believe that this costume choice is meant to mock the transgender community, because whereas we might initially laugh at Jackie's costume at the beginning of the show, by the halfway point, we're cheering on Billy's friend Michael's choice to wear women's clothing, and by the end of the production, we're applauding in solidarity with the rest of the cast coming out in tutus during the final curtain call. It's also worthwhile to point out that later on, once the stubborn Tony accepts the family's decision to support Billy, you see him wearing the same bikini apron that Jackie wears now. Hit him in the head! You sure? Of course I'm sure! Twat the little bastard! Oh! After watching Billy's lackluster performance as a boxer, again, a traditional symbol of macho masculinity that his father wants him to possess, You're a disgrace to your father, to them gloves, and to the fine traditions of this boxing, boxing hall. Billy meets Mrs. Wilkinson, whose name also means will and desire. This figure not only introduces and teaches Billy ballet, but soon becomes a surrogate motherly figure and spirit guide to Billy who lost his mother two years prior. Mrs. Wilkinson's song, Shine, contains at least two scriptural allusions. Never hide your light under a bushel, no matter how big the bushel, Tracy Atkinson. Obviously a reference to Jesus' teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. And then there's a variation of the Galatians 3 passage I mentioned earlier that refers to breaking down categories. It doesn't matter if you're large or small, trapezoid, short or tall, even if you can dance at all, all you really have to do is shine. Back home, Billy asks his grandmother what his grandfather was like. He was 
A complete bastard. In Grandma's song, she explains that times were different when she met her husband. Things were different then. Women were women and men. They were men. Alleging that things have since changed. Seventeen, that was it. Your life ended when you had a ring around your finger. She explains that the traditional norms of getting married simply because that's what men and women were supposed to do ultimately led to a marriage and lifetime of unhappiness. She continues, If I'd only known then what I know now, I'd have given them all the thing. Go and go dancing and not give a shit. Now be me on entire life. Instead of somebody's wife. Grandma gave up her identity to marry a man because society said so. Grandma's character calls to mind Naomi in the Book of Ruth. Queer theologians have traditionally recognized the Book of Ruth as being one of the queerest in the Bible. Not only because it portrays female protagonists, which challenges the patriarchy of the rest of the Bible, but has allusions to gender bending and perhaps even lesbianism. In the book, Naomi leaves Bethlehem as the wife of Elamlech and the mother of two sons, but returns as a woman who has been joined by another woman, who cleaves to her with a solemn declaration that before the Lord, nothing will part me from you. According to Marie Therese Wacker, she is like the verse in Genesis 2, when a man who leaves his father and mother and clings or attaches himself to his wife. There is nothing to prevent the reader from speculating that the two become one. There even is jubilation among the women of Bethlehem when they talk of Ruth's devotion or love for Naomi, and they use a term which expresses not only loyalty in a relationship, but also an erotic sexual connotation that is referenced in Song of Songs. Further, when Ruth has a son, Naomi takes the child and places him in her own lap, and the women of Bethlehem proclaim, Naomi has a son. Yes, there is a man in the story by the name of Boaz, but he functions more or less as an economic provider and a sperm donor to Ruth and Naomi, as he has only a few lines and is seduced through a plan set by Naomi. He is never focused on as a husband or even a male protagonist. Now, you may not agree with the lesbian perception of Ruth and Naomi, but at the very least, you need to recognize that the family dynamics of these two women alongside Boaz is queer, that is, out of the ordinary. It's also interesting to point out that Naomi's son is a distant ancestor to Jesus Christ, who was also born through surrogacy, in his case, the Virgin Mary, which is a story that also defies traditional husbandly role in that Joseph is not the one who impregnates his wife. The fact that Ruth, Naomi, and the Virgin Mary defy patriarchal norms is the reason why I'm connecting this to Billy Elliot's grandmother. Grandma says that she'd rather go dancing than have ever been married. Note the imagery of dance again. In this production, dancing is a symbol for liberation. Billy discovers who he really is through dance, even describing it as a freedom. Grandma says she'd rather dance than be married. Mrs. Wilkinson sings that we are born to boogie. And the town at the end of the show, after embracing Billy's choice, recognizes that his dance can give the town hope and become the star they sang about at the start of the show but we're not at that point yet. The next song is Solidarity, and on the surface, this again feels like a religious theme, since, after all, Jesus entered in solidarity with humankind among outcasts, and Christianity certainly teaches the importance of standing together equally in solidarity, yet in relationship to the characters, the solidarity of the community is actually a force of opposition. The police stand in solidarity, profiting from the overtime and the expense of minors. The minor's solidarity is eventually for naught in that the strike fails by the end of the production, and a community's solidarity of norms forever Ever challenges young people's ability to be themselves, in this case Billy's ballet or Michael's cross-dressing. A society's stubborn solidarity can make it very difficult for one to come out of the closet. Michael's song, Expressing Yourself, interestingly enough, begins with a closet and takes the message of Mrs. Wilkinson's song Shine a step further by emphasizing that people are naturally different and in these differences one ought to pursue their calling. Cause what the hell is wrong with expressing yourself We're trying to be free Dang it, sister! If you want to be a dancer, dance If you want to be a mind of mind If you want to dress like somebody else Fine, fine 
If you want to be a dancer, dance. If you want to be a minor, mine. If you want to wear a dress, fine, fine. As I stated earlier, people's gifts are linked to their calling. The Holy Spirit implants specific charisms in us as provisions for our journey of life towards our place within the world. Paul says this in his Body of Christ imagery in 1 Corinthians. Or if he was singing in this musical, it might be more like this. If you want to be a healer, heal. If you want to be a teacher, teach. If you want to be a prophet, preach, preach. Connecting this to Michael's song, if the Holy Spirit gave you a specific charism associated with mining, then it's your God-given duty to be a miner. So for Billy, it would have been sinful for him to pursue such a profession since he would have been denying God's gift of ballet for him and exchanging for pursuing what society expected of him. So, do you think I should go back and do the audition? I wouldn't if I were you. People will think you're mental. <laughs> What you dress up in women's clothing? That's different, is it? Of course it is. Michael is, for the most part, not afraid to be unconventional. He is willing to challenge traditional norms and show Billy a new way of living. The name Michael literally means one who is like God. In biblical and Christian tradition, we repeatedly see a queer God who defies cultural expectations and is without definition. In this sense, Michael is certainly like God. The very next song, The Letter, also contains the message of being yourself. In this tearjerker of a scene... Mom, who is dead, appears in spirit form on a stage reading a letter she wrote Billy, indicating that she's with Billy through everything. Know that I was always there. I was with you through everything. In the Gospel of John, Jesus promises a paraclete, a guide who continues to guide his followers once he's gone. Billy's mother takes on a Holy Spirit role, promulgating the most important message of the show. Always be yourself. To be yourself. This is the same role the Holy Spirit plays in our lives. She must have been a very special woman. No. She's just me, ma'am. Following this scene, the town discovers that Billy wants to go to ballet school, and the miners laugh at him. <laughs> You've got to be joking! With Tony being particularly angry. I'm not having any brother of mine poncing round for your gratification. Right? You say he wants to be a dancer. Well, let's see this dancing then. This is ridiculous. Tony, man. Shut up! If you're supposed to be a ballet dancer, let's be having you. Don't you dare. What sort of ballet teacher are you? This is his big chance. Come on, dance, you little bastard. He commands Billy to dance on the tabletop, but Billy refuses, in a scene similar to King Herod asking Jesus to perform stunts for him in order to prove his messianic identity. Angry dance follows immediately when Billy is reminded that his mother is dead. Me mom would let us- Well, your mom's dead! For Billy, this is like saying the Holy Spirit doesn't exist. God is dead. There is no hope. There is no plan. And that would mean Billy can't escape. His pent-up anger, hopelessness, and frustration is made evident. Act 2 shifts the focus of the story more towards the character of Jackie Elliott. Jackie's name means God is gracious, and in the second act explores whether or not Jackie will fulfill his namesake. Is he willing to be gracious? by sacrificing himself by crossing the picket line in a strike that has almost lasted a year in order to earn the funds to send Billy to his dance audition. Tony and the town, reflecting society, resist Jackie's intention, stating that Billy's just a boy. He doesn't know any better. It's not worth it. You can't do this to me, Dad! You can't do it to yourself! He's just a kid! He's only just a bin! Tony even exclaims that if his father crosses the picket line, he would never speak to him again. Now let's explore Tony for a moment. The Greek meaning of the name Anthony is priceless, in Latin highly praiseworthy, and I would argue sums up Tony's character. His motivation throughout the story is about fighting, power, victory, but I wouldn't label him a bad person or even misguided. After his altercation with his father, Tony asks, What's the point in trying to keep the community together? What's the point in trying to keep your family together anyway? Tony! No! Tony's drive to win comes down to survival. And this actually has been one of the primary arguments against equal marriage. That somehow LGBTQ people being permitted to marry would lead to a breakdown of a community and the family. After all, if heterosexual marriage between a man and a woman is all people have known, you can understand the fear of the unknown. I can't take this anymore, son. It's tearing me apart. It's lost 
We're finished, man. We're through. I need to give the kid a future. I need to look him in the eye. And believe me, son, I'd do the same for you. You can't give in now, Dad. Family dynamics of acceptance and rejection are all part of the LGBT families. Throughout the exchange with his son, Jackie keeps referring to the fact that Billy could be a star. And Jackie is now recognizing Billy's role and future, and that's not staying in a fledgling coal mining town as a miner himself. But he could be a oh, star. Fucking hell. But all we know, it's about and we all know how far it's about what he life. can go, and no one else can give oh, what I can it's give. It's what you always told us. No one else can give what I can give, says Jackie. By the end of the song, Jackie has fulfilled his namesake and is able to convince Tony and the rest of the miners to change their minds about Billy also. Meanwhile, Billy continues to work on his craft. Near the beginning of Act 2, Billy dances with who I would refer to as a glorified Billy. That is, Billy as an adult who has fulfilled his calling. This mystical scene foreshadows Billy's potential if he were to listen to the Spirit. This story calls to mind Jesus' transfiguration story as portrayed in the Synoptic Gospels. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus is said to have ascended a mountain where he encountered the spirits of Elijah and Moses. Jesus' appearance is described as transfigured, glowing brighter than bleach. Theologians have argued that this scene foreshadows Jesus in his post-resurrected glorified body. That is, what Jesus would look like after he fulfills his calling. This scene in Billy Elliot is Billy's transfiguration moment, where his true self gets to shine. At one point in this sequence, he even takes flight, an image of resurrection or ascension, a literal transcending from this plane unto a next, a rising above limitations to become divine, to, to be the star that Jackie alluded to. With the help of the town, Jackie is able to raise funds to buy two tickets to London and to pay for the Royal Ballet audition fee. As they await the audition, Billy begins to warm up, and you can clearly see Jackie's discomfort with his son's ballet. Is that absolutely necessary? <laughs> on the one hand, Jackie is willing to be open-minded enough to support Billy on his endeavor, but it doesn't mean that he's 100% comfortable as evident by his urging of Billy to stop. It's like a father who acknowledges his child's homosexuality, but is still pretty far away from marching in a gay pride parade. And if Jackie isn't uncomfortable enough, this happens just a minute later. You're right, pal. Hi, hi. Sorry, I was. Whoa! Anyways, here at the Royal Ballet audition, Billy, with his father alongside, is asked what dancing means to him. I can't really explain it. I haven't got the words. It's a feeling that you can't control. I suppose it's like forgetting, losing who you are, and at the same time, something makes you whole. It's like that there's some music playing in your ear. And I'm listening, and I'm listening, and then I disappear. And then I feel a change Like a fire deep inside Something burst in me wide open Impossible to hide And suddenly I'm flying Flying like a bird Like electricity Sparks inside of me And I'm free I'm free now, the first time I heard this song, I immediately thought of the Holy Spirit's role in our lives, how the Spirit is something that you can't explain with words. And when you're engaged with the Spirit, it's a feeling you can't control. Just take a moment and look at those lyrics. Everything that he describes can be attributed to the transformative effects that the Spirit has on every one of us. And most importantly for Billy, it's freedom. Um, free! I've seen this production three times live on stage, including on Broadway. And aside from the letters scene, it's the staging of this moment that has always gotten me. Here, this is the first time that Jackie truly watches his son dance. At this scene, he hears his son for the first time and he takes in all of what dancing really means to him. This is the moment when Jackie finally gets it. And he's proud. My... 
The show concludes with the good news of Billy being accepted into the Royal Ballet School, alongside the bad news that the strike is over and that the mines will eventually be shut down. Billy ascends to stardom while the miners descend into the pit. While singing another anthem containing yet another biblical reference, the first will be last. And then most fittingly, this production comes to an end with a queer kiss and with Michael lovingly seeing Billy off to fulfill his calling. See you, Michael. Yeah, see you, Billy. Now, I really hope I made it clear over the past 25 minutes how this production, which I truly do love, embodies the themes of queer theology. It's likely, however, that Elton John didn't really have religion in mind when pursuing this piece. But that's one of the beauties of queer theology, recognizing that truth isn't limited to just what's written in the Bible or what you hear in church on Sundays. God can and does use even the most random of things in this world to convey God's truth including a musical about a boy doing ballet.